If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 20 through 23. Our lesson today is on the two realities, the higher reality and the lower reality. And both are very real. And we must learn to separate the difference between the two in our hearts and minds, in our spirits, to be able to separate the higher reality from the lower reality and understand that both exist the higher is accessed by faith, and the lower reality takes no faith at all, it is accessed by our five senses of the body. Let's read our text. <clears throat> For the creature, and the creature simply means the creation, if you were able to have a high enough power telescope where you could look to the end of the universe to see everything that's been created, all the planets and, and the universe, that would be the creature. The creature was not made, or the creature was made subject to vanity. God allowed this creation that we can observe to be made subject to, and vanity simply means sin and the effects of sin, <clears throat> not willingly, <clears throat> but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. God subjected this lower reality. <clears throat> to sin and the effects of sin for a reason. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Okay, so this creation as we can see it right now is not delivered yet. Right now it's in the bondage of corruption from sin and the effects of sin. But God shall deliver it eventually and remake it into... <clears throat> Uh, perfection, free of disease and corruption. But right now it's not. <clears throat> For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. So the creation itself is groaning and travailing in pain up to this very moment. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. So, <clears throat> right now, this whole creation is in pain and suffering because of the effects of sin. And God's going to fix it all eventually. But right now, it's in bondage. This lower reality that we live in is very familiar to us. It includes, as you can see there on the whiteboard, our observable universe. If you could get a telescope and look and be able to see everything in the entire universe, that would be this lower reality that God has uh, subjected part of his creation to for a reason. Now, God lives in heaven, and the holy angels reside in heaven. <clears throat> and his heaven is not affected by this. He has kept his heaven free from these effects. But this lower reality, this part of his creation, after, after Lucifer sinned and became Satan, and God separated, made a separation, and made this lower reality separate from his heaven, and it is being affected by sin, by, for a reason. Did you know our bodies, our human bodies, are part of this lower reality? <coughs> our bodies, when they die, will go back to being the dust of the earth. Everything that mankind has made, uh, houses, computers, you know, jet airplanes, whatever, came from dirt. <coughs> and the elements, electricity comes from the elements. It's all this lower reality. Your Bible, if you're holding a Bible right now, is part of this lower reality. It's going to decay and go back to dust. The pages of the Bible. It's lower reality. The churches that you go to, no matter how beautiful they are, how much money it took to build them, they're just dirt. The church itself, the physical church that you can touch and smell, And right here, you can see on the board, I put water and wine and juice, and I bracketed that for a reason. The water that is sprinkled on you, if you're 
baptized with water baptism. That water is part of the lower reality. That physical water that's sprinkled on you is part of the lower. The wine or grape juice that you drink for communion, it's also part of this lower reality. It'll turn back into dirt. And dust. If you wear a cross around your neck, or the crosses that are in our churches, surely, uh, surely they symbolize what Christ did for us and His great love. But the cross itself, the wood, or whatever it's made out of, it's dirt. It's temporary. You can see I put temporary there on the lower reality because it is temporary. And the Bible does say that all of this is temporary. Now, the lower reality is very accessible to us. We can observe it. We can do experiments on it. We can see it and touch it and believe that it is real because it is right in front of us. But there is a higher reality that is just as real, and it is not temporary. And we can't see it. We can't touch it or feel it or hear it. We can only access it by faith. And our spirits, that which is not seen. <coughs> Have you ever seen a thought? Well, that's higher reality. Does your thought exist? Of course it exists. But it is higher reality. It is part of that realm which human beings cannot see. But it is real. And God has separated the higher from the lower for some reason which I'm not exactly sure, but that's what he's done. It involves those things that are spirit. Have you ever seen your spirit? Have you ever seen God's spirit? No. Have you ever seen an angel or a demon or Satan? Heaven. Have you ever seen heaven or hell or your faith? If you have faith towards God, can you see that? Can you see it when God forgives you? Or do you sense it in your spirit? It's of those things that are spirit that are not seen. You can't see sin. You can see the effects of it, can't you? Disease, pain, suffering on this earth. God has subjected this lower reality to, to those things for a reason. You can't see righteousness. You can see the fruits of it. But you can't see the, the heart that is righteous, though it, it exists. You can't see spiritual baptism. You can see water baptism as the symbol so that everyone can know and see on, on earth that this one was made clean. Can't see spiritual communion, your relationship with God that continues after you're spiritually baptized. You can see outward communion with the bread and, and the wine or grape juice. You can't see the word logos in the Greek, the rational communication of the subject of God. You can't see the word, but you can know it in your heart and in your spirit, certainly. And it exists. It is real. Can't see temptation. Oh, but we know it exists, don't we? If you're living for Christ, you certainly will be tempted. And you know when it's there. And it is very real, but you can't see it. But you're being tempted. Love. Cannot see love. But does love exist? Is love real? <clears throat> it is. In 1 Corinthians 6.13, Paul says, Meats for the belly, belly for meats, but God shall destroy it in them. You know God's going to melt this lower reality up when it's all said and done and start all over and recreate it and make it beautiful and connect it to his heaven that he exists so it shall all be one in the end. <clears throat> He's going to remake it, make it good and disease-free, sin-free, free from the effects of sin. In Colossians 3, 1, God tells us, Jesus tells us through Paul, seek those things which are above higher reality. Even though we live in this present world in the lower reality, we're living and existing. We're to seek those things high, that are higher in our spirit. Don't, don't, uh, don't ignore those things that are in the higher reality. Live according to those things. In 2 Peter 3, 10, it tells us God will... Melt everything down with fervent heat and he'll remake it. God bless.